Thank you. Thanks, Matthias. You can go to Children's Church now. <laughs> That's great. Um, right, so yeah, we're on uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 this morning. Um, so let's uh, pray and then we'll uh, begin. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for another opportunity to learn from your word from those who you allowed your Holy Spirit to uh, be inspired by, to write down words that are for our benefit, for our correction, for our uh, development, and for our good and for your glory. And this morning as we read Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and maybe try and work out what we can take from it, I pray that your Holy Spirit would take um, the words we hear, the words uh, I speak, and just um, bring them alive, bring them alive in our hearts and in our mind, and um, ultimately, Father, bring them alive in, in the way that we live. Um, and yeah, we just uh, ask for your presence and your uh, power to be here this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yes, yeah, so we can get to uh, chapter 8 of Ecclesiastes on the screen, NLT version, please. Um, yeah, so as we begin, it's uh, again, it's a reminder for those of you maybe who've missed some of the uh, chapters. Um, it's Solomon, you know, looking back on his life and trying to work, make sense of this world that doesn't make sense, uh, even with all the wisdom in the world. Um, but ultimately, uh, we can learn from his life and his um, wisdom that God gave him. So it says, how wonderful to be wise, to analyze and interpret things. Wisdom lights up a person's face, softening its harshness. Obey the king you vowed to God that you would. Don't try to avoid doing your duty and don't stand with those who plot evil. For the king can do whatever he wants. His command is backed by great power. No one can resist or question it. Those who obey him will not be punished. Those who are wise will find a time and a way to do what is right. For there is a time and a way for everything, even when a person is in trouble. Indeed, how can people avoid what they don't know is going to happen? None of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. There is no escaping that obligation, that dark battle. And in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked. I have thought deeply about all that goes on here under the sun, where people have the power to hurt each other. I have seen wicked people buried with honor, yet they were the very ones who frequented the temple and are now praised in the same city where they committed their crimes. This too is meaningless. When a crime is not punished quickly, people feel it is safe to do wrong. But even though a person sins a hundred times and still lives a long time, I know that those who fear God will be better off. The wicked will not prosper, for they do not fear God. Their days will never grow long like the evening shadows. And this, not all that, and this is not all that is meaningless in our world. In this life, good people are often treated as though they were wicked, and wicked people are often treated as though they were good. This is so meaningless. So I, I recommend having fun because there is nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. That way they will experience some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. In my search for wisdom and in my observation of people's burdens here on earth, I discovered that there is ceaseless activity day and night. I realized that no one can discover everything God is doing under the sun. Not even the wisest people discover everything, no matter what they claim. So, there we go. There's chapter 8. Um, you'll probably have noticed there's a lots of uh, repeated uh, themes and kind of sayings um, that just get repeated over and over again. Um, again, he kind of looks at how actually we're all going to die one day. So, how do we live under the sun um, in view of eternity? But let's just look. It says, how wonderful to be wise, verse 1, to analyze and interpret things. 
Wisdom lights up a person's face, softening its harshness. So what they're saying is it's, it's better to be wise, isn't it? It's good to be wise because it often means you make good decisions. Um, yeah, and you, know, you can see when people maybe have regret on their face, you know, when they're just like, oh, no, why did I do that? Or, you know, and, and, and we can live with these regrets, can't we? And actually, we don't need to have regrets because when we come to Jesus, he wipes us clean, doesn't he? Of all the silly things, the foolish things, the stupid things that we've done. And he can actually give us a new face that shines. You know, we pray that prayer, don't we? That, um, that God's face would shine upon us. And when we reflect God's beauty, because um, it says here, wisdom lights up a person's face, softening its harshness. So, you know, I wouldn't say anyone here has a harsh face. Um, we've all got wonderful face, faces that reflect God's beauty. Um, but when we, when we live in God's kind of light, when we live in his light, when we live in his freedom, it does have physical, um, physical, what's the word, physical effects, you know. Someone can tell when you've been in the presence of God and, um, because your face just radiates his beauty. Um, even if you're, you know, like me, <laughs> not got the world's greatest face or whatever. Um, but actually there's a beauty that comes from following God. Um, the Bible talks about, you know, the, whiz, uh, the b- fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so when we fear, when we honor, respect and follow God... Uh, we become wise, and then that has an effect on our lives. You know, if you've um, made unwise decisions, you know, addictions, mistakes, you've maybe abused your own body, um, just, yeah, just done foolish things, um, it can sometimes show up in the way we look. Um, but God has a redeeming um, nature, and he redeems us, and he can soften our heart not only soften our hearts, but he can actually soften the way we appear. Um, So yeah, there's a bit of uh, encouragement. Then it says, obey obey the king. Now, obviously we can obey an earthly king. You know, if we've got good leaders, good kings, good presidents, whatever, good emperors, um, it's important to obey the king. But but most importantly for us, it's important to obey King Jesus. and it says we vowed to God that we would. You know, when we make a vow, you know, in Old Testament, often God had uh, laws for, you know, what to do when you make a vow. Um, and basically, keep your vows. Uh, and so when we come to, to uh, Jesus and, and say we make, make him Lord of our lives, that's making a vow. It's saying I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life. Um, and I'm going to do whatever you call me to do. Um, and sometimes, as it says in verse 3, we can avoid doing our duty, you know, we, or we can try to avoid doing our duty and end up doing, uh, it says, don't stand with those who plot evil. Now, evil is just anything that is contrary to the will of God, because the will of God is all that is good. Um, and so when we live outside of God's will, then we put ourselves at risk of God's wrath. Because it says here, for the king can do whatever he wants. He command, his command is backed by great power. Um, you know, you don't have, I don't have to probably explain how much power God has. Um, it says no one can resist or question it. You know, even the Bible talks about the arrogant and the foolish and they think that they can resist God, that they can stand against God. And maybe, you know, as we read later, God allows wicked people to prosper temporarily. Um, Life's not straightforward as if you obey and honor God, then life is all good, and if you disobey God, life is bad. It doesn't work like that. And I think one of the reasons God does that is so that we can demonstrate faith and love and obedience to him. You know, if, if we knew that every time we obey God, then good things happen, then who wouldn't obey God? Do you know what I mean? And there'd be no opportunity to really show our commitment, our devotion, and our um, faith and love for God. Um, Because actually, it's in the hardest times of life that we can show where our loyalties and our allegiances truly lie. Um, So yeah, no one can resist or question it. It says, verse five, those who obey him will um, will not be punished. Ultimately, if we obey God, 
he will honor us, he will lift us up, um, maybe, you know, in this lifetime, but certainly in eternity. And then this, this one's good, I like this, because I'm always talking about this to my children. It says, those who are wise will find a time and a way to do what is right. Um, you know, we all, I mean, we're all guilty of it, aren't we? Where if there's something that we really want to do, we will find a time, we'll find the time, and we'll make it happen. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> my children are wonderful. But, you know, when we say, oh, go upstairs and get ready for bed, um, you know, cleaning their teeth, brushing their teeth, they're like, oh, we were waiting for the bathroom to be free. Oh, we were waiting for you to come and tell us to do it, you know. But if it's, oh, I'm going to play on my Nintendo Switch, there's no waiting around, you know. Uh, they'll be, you know, on a Saturday morning, they'll be sat outside our bedroom waiting for us to get up so that we, um, they can go on, uh, on their uh, games console because they really want to do it and they'll find a way and a time to do what is right. And I'm sure we can think of uh, things in our lives that we definitely find a time and a way to do um, if it's something that we really want to do. And that's why Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. If, if the thing that you desire, if the thing that you really want to do is to obey God, then you will find a time and a way to do what is right. You know, um, wicked people will say, oh, I just didn't have the time um, and I couldn't work it out. But, you know, when, when we really want to do something, we will do it, won't we? We, we can see uh, what people value by what they do um, and what's important to them. And it says here, even when a person is in trouble, I think that's on the next page. There we go. Even when a person is in trouble, you know, some people might make excuses going, oh, I was, you know, I had this stress in my life or I had this problem or, you know, do you remember Jesus with the, um, the man at the uh, pool? And he was like, oh, I have no one to get me in. It's like, okay, he was comfortable in the fact that he was, you know, in a bit of a trouble and, um, and Jesus kind of questioned how much he desired to, do, to get healed. You know, he even, Jesus even asked him, do you want to get healed? Um, but actually, when our, when our desires are for the things of God, we will make them happen and we'll, you know, make a way, even when life is difficult or where there are challenges, we will overcome them. And then verse 7, it goes on to talking about death, <laughs> as Solomon likes to do, but in a kind of good way. Um, it says, indeed, how can people avoid what they don't know is going to happen? No one knows when, how we're going to die. Um, it's just the truth, isn't it? It's a, it's a morbid fact. But actually, it says, none of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. None of us. There is no escaping that obligation. <laughs> that dark battle in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked. If we go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5... Um, let me see if I've got it. So this is what um, Paul says about our bodies and this life and eternity. It says, for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, <laughs> nice way of saying when we die, <laughs> taking down your tent, and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. Um, we grow weary in our present bodies. Um, I'm absolutely aching. Yesterday I was destroying the chimney breast in our living room along with um, Victor and Adin who uh, helped us out. And honestly, they're all fine apparently because they regularly go to the gym, but I'm aching all over. Um, so it says, we grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies... So we will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. I like that saying, swallowed up by life. That's the uh, amazing um, truth of being a follower of Jesus, is that when, we, when, we give up, when this body gives up, we get swallowed up by life, not death. Um, God himself has prepared for us for this, prepared us for this, 
And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we do deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. And so, you know, where it says, verse 7, uh, and in the face, of, sorry, verse 8, and in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked. It doesn't matter, you know, if we are doing God's will, if we're doing God's will, then it doesn't matter when God calls us home because we'll have done what he called us to do. If, however, we are living to serve our will, you know, Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done, and that should be our uh, prayer every day. If we're doing God's will, then that's fine. God can take us home wherever, whenever. Um, but if we're doing our own thing, then we're suddenly in panic because we're like, oh, we haven't finished doing what we wanted to do. So I would encourage you to uh, ensure that we're doing God's will every day. And then we don't have to worry about when or um, when God calls us home. Um, verse 9 it says, I have thought deeply about all that goes on here under the sun where people have the power to hurt each other. You know, that's one of the unique things that makes us human, the fact that we can hurt one another because we know what hurts us. Um, and, it, you know, you see the evil that takes place here under the sun. Um, it says here, I have seen wicked people buried with honor. You know, injustice, isn't it? Life is unjust. Um, people who do evil often, you know, can sometimes get, a, you know, a, a burial in um, biblical times. Being buried was a sign of honor. You know, we read earlier about, you know, not even get, getting a proper burial. That's a sign that you're not honored. Um, yeah, sometimes this world honors wicked people. It says, yet they were the very ones who frequented the tape the temple and are now praised in the same city where they committed their crimes we can very easily sometimes forget the evil things that people do um, even in their own city um, but we know that you know as life under the sun is one tiny part of our life but actually we have eternity and in eternity we know as we've just read in second corinthians that we all face Jesus as our judge um, and so it's important that yeah what we do with our earthly bodies is important because we will be judged by Christ um, it says here uh, yeah they were the very ones who frequented the temple and are now praised in the same city where they committed their crimes this too is meaningless when a crime is not punished quickly people feel it is safe to do wrong you know um, in Genesis Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve. Um, well, actually, before chapter 3, what did God say about the tree of knowledge of good and evil? He said, if you touch it, you will die. And what happened? Eve touched the fruit, didn't she? And she was like, huh, I haven't died. <laughs> you know, so she then thought, oh, it must be safe to do wrong. Just as, you know, children, if they do something and they don't get told off, then they think, oh, it must be good. Um, but actually, that was God's grace, wasn't it? God um, has always been a gracious God. And he gives us, you know, even when, he, um, when they left the Garden of Eden, God clothed them. Um, he didn't, they didn't die straight away. Um, I mean, can you imagine the world? If, every time, if we ever disobeyed God, we would be zapped. <laughs> yeah, there'd be no one left with <laughs> you know. Um, but actually, we can respond to that in two ways. We can think, oh, God's not smite, smited me. <laughs> He's not um, sent a thunderbolt, uh, a lightning bolt, sorry, um, and killed me straight away as soon as I had that lustful look or told that little lie or cheated someone out of something or, you know, blasphemed or whatever. 
But what we don't want to do is be thinking that actually it's safe to sin. It's safe to disobey God. You know, maybe that's what Eve thought. She thought, oh, I've touched this fruit and I'm okay. Or so she thought. But actually, ultimately, there comes a time. Um, I think in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 26, if we could just get that on the screen. What does it say? Here we go. So I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mock you when disaster overtakes you. It's the disaster overtaking us. You know, we can think that we've got away from things. Um, a little, possibly a little analogy is, uh, so when, you know, if you're driving, and I've done this many a times, you'll, someone's going really slow and you're in a hurry, so you'll overtake them safely, of course. Um, and you'll, you know, you'll be like, oh yes, I finally got past that person. I can get on with my journey and do what I really want to do and get to where I want to do, where I want to go quickly. And then you get to the red light and you have to stop. You know, it might be death where we all have to stop. Um, and then in your rear view mirror, you see this little car just trundling and it comes behind you and then maybe there are two lanes and before you know it, they're in front of you. <laughs> and you kind of think, oh yes, I'm winning. But actually, we, we can't get away. When, I, you know, when, when, I, when we sin, when we disobey God, we can't escape um, his judgment. Um, the only hope we have is to repent and seek Jesus, his salvation and his forgiveness. Um, you know, nothing escapes God's eyes. Nothing escapes. Um, you know, it says that he doesn't slumber nor sleep. He watches over us, and that's watching over us in a good way, but also he knows every little thought, deed, action. Um, and so we might think that we've overtaken the, uh, and got away from the disaster, but uh, it's always there in the background, <laughs> and one day we will have to face God's judgment. Um, yeah, if we can go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Here we go. So people feel it is safe to do wrong, but uh, verse 12, but even though a person sins a hundred times and still lives a long time, I know that those who fear God will be better off. Because ultimately this life is the tiniest little speck, probably not even a speck, if we look at our lives through God's eyes of eternity. Um, those who fear God will be better off. The wicked will not prosper, for they do not fear God. Their days will never grow long like the evening shadows. And then it says, and this is not all that is meaningless in our world. In this life, good people are often treated as though they were wicked, and wicked people are often treated as though they were good. No more true than in the case of Jesus, where he was the best perfect, the absolute perfection, you know, exactly what we were created to be, he was, and yet he was treated and counted and crucified along with the wicked. Um, so, verse 15, what Solomon say? So, I recommend having fun, because, now this, when he says fun, doesn't mean just like, you know, immoral, debauchery, and all sorts of things, it means actually enjoying life enjoying life properly in the way that God wants us to enjoy life. So I recommend having fun because there is nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. That way they will experience some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. So don't forget the last bit, which is some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. So God's given us, you know, jobs to do, his will to obey, his will to carry out, um, but while we're doing that, enjoy life. Enjoy, you know, sitting down, sharing a meal. Enjoy coming to church, worshipping God. Enjoy um, being with your family, with your friends, with your loved ones. And obviously we're going to do that next week and celebrate, obviously, Dan and Rebecca's uh, wedding blessing. Um, and yeah, we'll have a great time. We'll have a great time and we'll seek God's will and we'll celebrate and thank God for everything that he's given us. Um, and yeah, 
but we have a job to do, don't we? We have a job and a mission as a church to seek God's will, to do God's will, to see his kingdom here on earth. Um, next verse, please. What does it say? Verse 16. In my search for wisdom and in my observation of people's burdens here on earth, I discovered that there is ceaseless activity day and night. Um, yeah, stuff happens, doesn't it, all the time. Um, and sometimes it's good to stop and rest and actually just do what God did on the seventh day and rest. It's good for our soul. It's good for our mind. Um, you know, we might have burdens, but if we don't just sometimes put that aside and rest, then uh, we can really kind of burn ourselves out. Um, and yeah, that's not how God wanted us to live. He wanted us to rest. Just as he told the Israelites, you know, because they were so used to just working and working and working, and he wanted them to have a day of rest. Um, but yeah, some people think that they can deal with their burdens just by, like, if they just have enough time in the day, have enough, if they work hard enough, they can get rid of their burdens. But actually, Jesus says, you know, I'll carry your burdens. Cast your burdens onto me because I care for you. And my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And actually that will allow you to rest. And finally, I'll finish with this. It says, I realize that no one can discover everything God is doing under the sun. Not even the wisest people discover everything, no matter what they claim. And my point is that, you know, if someone seems to have an answer for everything and knows every um, kind of, bit of the Bible and thinks that they have God um, so you know they know exactly what God's like and know every answer to every mystery because uh, there are lots of mysteries with God there are things that we don't understand even Solomon in his great wisdom didn't understand everything about the way God does stuff and it says here not even wisest people discover everything no matter what they claim and as I said earlier the fear of God is what? The beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is not the completion and the full amount of wisdom. It's just the beginning. The beginning of wisdom. So even Solomon, all he had was a beginning. Maybe, maybe he had an extra, you know, sample chapter uh, that we don't have because he was very, very wise. But ultimately, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And that beginning is really important because if we think that we know everything, if we think that we have God sussed out, that we understand every, every decision, everything that he makes happen or allows to happen or doesn't make happen, if we think we understand that, then we make big mistakes. Um, yeah, so if someone, you know, does seem to have every single answer and God kind of all figured out or is trying to figure God out, then I wouldn't trust them. Uh, because actually it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say that and, you know, be humble and realize, I don't know about this, but one day when we see God face to face, we will know, you know, know in full. You know, we know in part at the moment. That's all we know, the beginning. <laughs> but then he'll tell us everything, won't he? He'll tell us everything and we'll uh, enjoy that. I certainly will. Um, but while we're here on earth, we can trust God. That's where the trust and faith and living by faith comes because, you know, we see how messed up the world is and how sometimes, um, well, often bad things happen to good people, good things happen to bad people. Life isn't all straight and makes logical, perfect sense. We have to trust God and we have to, um, yeah, seek his wisdom, but know it's just the beginning and even the wisest people um, aren't able to discover everything about God. Um, and that's everything I think Ecclesiastes chapter 8 has to say. Um, next, next time, chapter 9, it's uh, all about death again, <laughs> coming to us all. Um, but, you know, the, the, the summary of Ecclesiastes is to fear God. Enjoy life. Um, do whatever your heart um, leads you in a way 
you know, you're submitting to God, not just all the deceitful stuff our heart wants to do, but ultimately that we're going to give an account to God. And so we need to live lives that honor and respect him. Um, and that there's a time for everything. You know, um, Ecclesiastes talks about, you know, eating, drinking, enjoying life. It says, you know, better to go to funeral, spend your time at funerals than parties. But then, you know, so which is it? In, eat, drink, and enjoy life or go to funerals? Well, it's about there being a time for everything. You know, a time for everything. Um, and living this life and knowing that actually sometimes we really need to celebrate. Sometimes we really need to reflect and focus on the reality of life, which is that we're all going to the same destination um, and ultimately looking for God to guide us in that timing. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for listening.